my name's Lisa. Um, I'm an artist filmmaker, and I was a performer in Brandy Leary's Glaciology. And the experience moved me so much, I wanted to talk to other performers who'd been in it and document our experience. Glaciology is a human sculpture. It was a community of people taking care of each other. Rolling and moving through the streets of Toronto for an extended period of time, about 12 hours. For Nuit Blanche, we use 72 performers, and it starts in one part of the city and it travels to another part. It was a durational piece. Showing the world how people interact with the landscape, and how the landscape interacts with people. My name is Brandy Leary. I am a choreographer and a performer and an artistic director of an organization called the Nundam Dance Theatre. A lot of the work I make is interested in how to slow down, because I think when we slow down, we actually start to see things differently. The city is going on around you, but somehow there's like this energetic leak that comes from all of the work of the performer. My name is Brittany. I am an aerialist and acrobat. My name is Christine Birch. I am a dance artist based here in Toronto. My name is Nicole Negro and I'm an interdisciplinary dance artist. Hi, I'm Mary Margaret and I'm a writer editor as well as a circus performer. Uh, my name is Jordan Campbell. I'm a actor, creator, performance artist. My name is Karen Graham. I'm a performance artist. I'm Nicole Belfer. I'm a dancer, performer, and aerialist. My name is Jackie. I am a teacher by day, an aerialist by night. And I was in the glacier. 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 Yeah, what I found so interesting was just uh, everyone's diverse backgrounds. Everyone came from different artistries um, and experiences. So like artists and aerialists and dancers and visual artists. It was really special to have that kind of togetherness with people from all different walks of life. I love that we were doing it on the streets and it was really interesting to see people see it because um, a lot of time this kind of work you do it for like the theater community or the arts community and your friends and to just to present that kind of level of experiment to people who would never even see this kind of thing was really interesting to just hear them react to it, it was great. And I think this kind of brought in a lot of artists in the communities who might have not worked together in the past or who had worked together in the past and wanted to do so again. And it just kind of created like a meeting place of bodies. It was definitely a deep emotional experience because you're not, you're not aware exactly of what's going on outside of you. You're so focused inwards with the other bodies. First, it was very difficult to perform with that many people. Um, I was very unsure of myself, I was very self-conscious about even things as silly as my weight. Am I too heavy to be on top of this person? I would rather be on the bottom of the glacier as opposed to on top of the glacier. But it's not something that could have happened if we were by ourselves or if it was three people rolling. It was a community that happened in those 12 hours. It felt really safe and meditative. I felt cozy and also in a very violent setting because of the movement, but at the same time you could settle into a position and be at peace. Everyone who, who was part of it, they were um, high energy and optimistic and open. There was this moment where for me like we all kind of stopped talking and it just became really easy. And we just found a really easy way to do it, and it became very calm. And it, I felt kind of a release in that moment, because it was, it was tiring. But then when we got to that point, it was just like, this is what we do, we, we roll in this big clump. I can honestly say I felt as though time stopped, 
and I almost found it painful because it was so new to me and I was a little uncomfortable. Then be in these incredibly intimate positions with someone's crotch in your face and you know your bum in someone's face and just being like all right well this is where we're at. It was so good to be in there in this way that was really remarkable and again really unexpected for me. Brandy had talked about like a lot of the shaking, the melting and uh, freezing and when you really start to think about the nuances of that, it really starts to like bring stuff up. I lost a lot of senses in a way, like I lost a sense of, it was just like that was my whole life after a while. There were just these moments where you would be kind of lying there or enjoying a moment and then someone beside you would shift and your body would start to shift with them. And so it was movement without consciously having to move. On one hand, I felt like I was part of a community, and on the other, I felt alone. I had to actually remove myself from the glacier during rehearsals because I was uncomfortable and I didn't feel good about it. So the progression was really good for me. What I can only really describe is beautiful, which is a really vague term, but I feel like it kind of encompasses a lot of things. There's a lot of really um, intense, almost violent moments, um, there's beauty in that, and then also to really calm, almost meditative, floating moments. There was a communication always happening, and there were moments where everyone would start laughing, and moments where everyone would just kind of be like, oh, whatever just happened just hit really, really deep. The ability to tell how time was passing was completely removed. You just kind of lost all track of time. You're just so kind of in your own state, being aware of other people. Time really sped up for me. The first rehearsal that was an hour and a half in the glacier felt like about 10 minutes. On one hand, I felt very safe, and on the other, I felt very vulnerable and exposed. I wanted to challenge myself and my own boundaries and my own comfort zones to put myself out there. And this was, I'm a person who jumps in with two feet, so I jumped in with two feet and it took a little bit of time. There was some growing pains. I think we're encouraged a lot today in society to engage up until a certain point. Um, and the people that you feel comfortable with, you're allowed to touch, you're allowed to have that contact with. I think that's the biggest thing, the, like, I trust you, even though I don't even know your last name. I don't even know your first name. So it was really interesting working with so many bodies at one time, um, feeling what that felt like in different environments. Um, it was really unique and I loved it. That's where the community happened. That's where we were allowed to support each other and it didn't have to be I'm here for you right now, it was, I'm around you, I'm holding you, I'm, you're on me, I'm on you, you can lift me, I trust you. I think that's the biggest thing. It was a really amazing experience. I had never done anything in a giant group like that before. Um, and the neat thing was, is you worked with some different people every time you did it. So during rehearsal and during the launch, there just seemed to be someone new beside you or under you on top of you every time. In the last 10 minutes, suddenly everyone was like, oh, there it is, there's that energy, da 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 and it kind of finished off on a really high note. It wasn't euphoric at the end, it was kind of like a slow death, which is maybe what the whole piece is about, really. And it was this beautiful way to get to know these new people. I loved it. I loved being in this huge intimate pile with strangers. I really think that sense of community and that sense of collaboration helped me feel more comfortable with myself. So it was a really positive experience in the end, even though it started out being very difficult. But it was more about having that connection and supporting each other and just kind of knowing someone was always there for you. It's a beautiful little microcosm of humanity, generosity.